You know him, you love him. Show some love for John Bruton, everybody. Keep it going for Jimmy and this sassy ass. You are so goddamn sassy. I like you. Your whole vibe is fun, man. You got the shorts on. You got three buttons down, chest out, ponytail still. Mm. You wrote the Kama Sutra book, didn't you? I know you, did. you know some freaky shit with your fingers that nobody knows about. You passed on generation to generation. It's good to make a sex joke in public. Remember how we couldn't do anything in public a while ago? It's weird. I miss it. I mean, I only miss one part about the whole mask thing was the mask. Like, I, I, I didn't mind them, because some people had bad dental work. Sometimes you need to see that fucking smile on my face, like, <laughs> cover their fucking shit up. <laughs> Plus, with the mask, I could judge people a little faster. Like, the kind of mask you had on was a reflection of your character to me. Like, when you had that N95 mask with the vent, too, I fuck with you. Like, I believe in that person. They, I trust them. Then I did the one thing. I was in the stage of uh, my mask would coordinate with my outfit. So whatever I was wearing, my mask would match that. Like, most, a lot of people had that. A lot of people had that cool, cute, I'm trying to be cute and safe. That's what a lot of people were at with the shit. Uh, I didn't like the people who had the blue, like the dust mask. That shit was kind of like, you can't have that for so long. Like, you gotta get another one eventually. Like, they're free. Like, it's fucking, <laughs> throw, it's like a puppy pad. Throw this shit away, bro. Like, it's the stain on the front, like a filter now. Like, get, like it's, it's paper, man. Get anywhere. You stop. I knew we didn't take it that serious when I seen the t-shirt mask, you know, and people just do this type of shit and try and go into a store. It's like, oh, no, you can't walk in. Like, it's not a mask. Like, you can't just cover up like that. If it was that easy, you would have been did that. I seen the LeBron happen at a gas station. A dude just did this shit trying to walk in. Like, come on, man. I don't need to touch anything. I won't call my promise. Let me get some fucking gas. Stupid. Come 37, you know, I didn't take it that serious. I, I grew up when AIDS came out. You know, that shit was real to me. Like, AIDS was different. AIDS changed my life. Easy e died from AIDS. Magic Johnson had to stop playing basketball because of AIDS. I had to watch Pedro on Real World die, like, every fucking week, tune in, <laughs> losing weight, cheeks sinking in, holding his boyfriend's hand, just watch that shit. With COVID, we didn't really lose anybody famous. Like, we lost family and friends, yes, but we did not lose anybody that was, like, famous to, like, make that big deal about. Like, Herman Cain, like, we didn't give a fuck. Like, we made <laughs> jokes about it before it happened. Like, if you knew anybody black who saw him at the fucking Trump rally with a mask off, like, that nigga ain't gonna make it. We knew it, we knew it. We said it all to ourselves, like, fucking, I'm gonna miss Herman Cade again. Like, we already lost him once to white people, but now I was like, damn, he gonna die next. <laughs> like, Tom Hanks had it, and we was like, oh shit. But then, like, a day later, we made jokes about the shit. Like, I seen somebody had a meme where it was like Forrest Gump talking about, he got that shit from Jenny. I'm like, come on now, this is, <laughs> this is outrageous. Like, AIDS had a fucking hit record, you know? We Are The World came out because of that shit. Like, Quincy Jones produced it, Michael Jackson, Paul McCartney, Tina Turner, all these people in this fucking one hit record. COVID ain't got no hits, though. You realize that? <laughs> Like, there's no Drake reference, Megan Thee Stallion ain't said shit about it. It's not really a thing. We don't care. But I still have to say, when I thought I had it, though, I lost my fucking mind. Like, like my girl was six months pregnant and was moving into the house. I was moving into the house. She just was being a girl and pregnant, so she wasn't doing shit besides supervising. And <laughs> trying to direct where box is gonna go, and I gotta unpack later. Like, it's whatever, long story. So, after all this shit, I didn't wear a mask the whole time because it's hard to breathe with a mask with asthma and it's like, and moving boxes. I'm not in shape, so it's just like, I'm fucking doing this shit by myself. Mask down. We finally get set down to eat, and I'm cutting to the chicken, put it in my mouth, and I'm like, fuck, I can't taste shit. This is a symptom. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try and smell the plate. Try to smell the plate, couldn't smell the shit. I'm like, fuck me, the end is near. <laughs> I had a beer. I'm gonna chug this beer and hope for the best. I chug the beer. I'm like, fuck. She can't cook. <laughs> Six months pregnant, already committed in the fucking house. And I got a microwave queen. 
<laughs> Broke my little heart. And it was my fault too. Like I didn't I didn't vet her in, in every way I could have. You know, I was I was so happy to get her. She's got a doctorate. I'm a dropout. Like I shouldn't be fucking with her. She should be fucking with me. I just I'm in here to win it, you know, like fuck it. So I trapped her, you know. <laughs> I even told her. I told her she was pregnant. I sent her a text message saying, yeah, yeah, I think you're pregnant. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I said, no, that last one, I feel like Steph Curry shooting a three-pointer. Like, I let that shit go. I knew it was going down. When I turned my back, did a little shimmy in the bathroom. <laughs> you know, it is what it is, but damn. And quarantine was a weird time to get to know somebody better, you know? Like, it's, it's not like you can get a time away. It's like every fucking day. And she would always try to have a story for me, and she would blow my mind, like, nigga, when the fuck was you not with me? Like, you went to the bathroom for five minutes. That's when you got another story to tell me now? Like, you know, I was just thinking the other day, that fuck, no, I don't want to hear it. We've been here the whole time. So what we did, we used to start watching a lot of TV to keep us from talking about it, and nothing. So we just watching TV shows, talking about TV shows. But watching her shows made me realize I don't love her like I thought I did. <laughs> like some shows she would watch, I'm like, damn, this, I, that's real love. We are fucking a lie. Like, she watched this show called My 600 Pound Life. And the show is exactly what you think. It's like a, a woman who's at least 600 pounds, but she has a significant other who loves her so much, he's an enabler. Like, the motherfucker wipes and feeds her. He's a part of the problem as much as he loves her. If my girl gains 60 pounds without a baby involved, I'm fucking leaving. Like, <laughs> and if you can ask me, if I had a ball that was 60 pounds, I threw it at your head as attempt of murder. Like, that's a lot of weight to put on just for the fuck of it. I'm not gonna wait to see that train wreck land. Like, no, I'm out. Like, <laughs> be a single mom with that bullshit. Oh. <laughs> Another show she watches that made me get, like, kind of cagey was uh, 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> That shit's rough to watch. Like three months. That's all the fuck it is. Ninety days. Three fucking months. These this couple of weeks they want to get married. We are three years of same address and a fucking baby. I'm on the fence. Like, hey man, let's <laughs> let's wait till Christmas and revisit this, please. Like, <laughs> let's put a pin in this, man. <laughs> One show that she uh, actually got me hip to, that I really liked, was Mad Singer. That became my little guilty pleasure. I binge watched all those fucking seasons. That shit was fun. Like, if you haven't seen it, it's a show where it's like a B-list celebrity is just like a high school mascot. You gotta guess who it is. And the reason I like that show so much is because it's the most borderline racist shit we can do without being fucked up, you know? Like, you hear somebody's voice, like, is that a black person or a white person? You think that's okay for us to do, though, like we're supposed to. Like, they, even the host on the show came up with their own little words for it. Uh, Jeannie McCarthy was a, a host on it, and she came up with a boy band or R&B, and I'm like, that's a great description. So, okay, let's game on. You always got some niggas fired. You're right. Let's keep playing. It's cool. <laughs> and I was getting pretty good at the show. Like, I was. I guess Shaka Khan was on there. I had Anita, uh, no, Patti LaBelle. T Pain was a good one. But this last season kind of fucked me up. It was like through a curveball. First episode. Uh, it was Kermit the Frog. And I'm like, that's not a real person. Like, <laughs> like I guess Ray Romano was always close, you know? I'm like, cool. It sounds the same. Then the next week really fucked me up. Cause I, I thought I knew it. I was like, hell yeah, I know exactly who that is. And it was Caitlyn Jenner. I'm like, fuck, I thought it was Bruce. <laughs> like, it sounds so much like Bruce, nigga. Like, I could have swore that was the same hands and everything. I thought that was Bruce Jenner, man. I get it, my fault is Caitlyn. But woo, to the ear, that sounds a lot like Bruce. <laughs> Another thing I did over quarantine is I discovered marijuana. Um, 37 years of being a square, and I finally fucking figured it out, but I didn't. It was hard, because I didn't know where to get it. You know, I thought it was legal, so I got excited, but nobody could buy it here. So I had to go to this plaza by my house. And I knew they sold it there, because whenever I tried to pay my phone bill, somebody walks by me, I got that loud, I got that fire, now I'm looking for him, like, where the fuck the marijuana man at? I need to, I need to see him busting. Wait, I don't know. So I finally see him, I'm like, hey man, you know, I'm trying to buy some weed. He's like, all right, how much you want? So I went, can I get a dime bag? He said, oh, we don't sell like that no more. I was like, how you sell it? He said, I can sell you an eight. So, all right, how much for the eight? 
And he looked me up and down and said, for you? I said, oh shit, that's never good. <laughs> I'm like, for you, Mr. Funny Man? Uh, shit, give me 350 for the eight. I'm like, fuck, drugs are expensive. <laughs> I'm like, man, let me, let me go to ATM real quick, and I'll come back to your money. I go to ATM, and I get scared, because I only can pull out $200. I'm like, fuck, he gonna shoot me over being short on his drug money. Uh, maybe if I don't get the whole eight, give him you know, half the money for the 16th or some shit, I'm gonna try that. <laughs> So I go back to him and say, hey, man, I couldn't get all the money. I'll come back at midnight if you want me to. But, you know, there's 200, you know, however you want to do it. He said, oh, man, it's cool. Just don't tell nobody that's your price, Mr. Funny Man. Only you get that price. Don't tell nobody it's 200 for no eighth, nigga. Please. <laughs> I guess I fuck my shit up. So here you go. I took the shit, ran in my car, and I looked in my hand, and I'm like, fuck, it's nothing but green nuggets. Like, I don't know how to smoke this. I thought it came, like, in a joint or some shit. Like, <laughs> so I fucking go on the internet, and I like, fucking come to YouTube, and it says how to roll a joint. So I watch the video because you can learn anything on YouTube. Uh, only thing is, I didn't know you had to have equipment to fucking roll a joint and smoke. Like, this shit, I never knew this. Like, you gotta have a fucking grinder and shit. This dude had a tray and all kind of logos and shit. I, didn't, I don't have a fucking grinder. So I had to get a fucking shot glass and a butter knife and just start crushing the shit up, <laughs> trying to get it fine enough to roll it. And I don't, my fingers aren't really good for video. I don't play video games or nothing, so this shit was not really working that good. I fucked up so much weed trying to roll it, just <laughs> fucking it all up. I spent so much goddamn weed, I just said, fuck it, I got a spoon and grab one of the nuggets like heroin. <laughs> it works in enclosed spaces. Can't do it. I ride around in my car with that spoon, but it's, it's weird when you valet your car here. They just see a little dirty spoon. Like, no, no, I ain't, it's not the right, not the same drugs, nigga, it's different, but judge if you want, man, fuck it. <laughs> Only problem with me when I get high, I get really paranoid. And I didn't know how paranoid I already was until like I got high and I realized, like, shit, I'm living in a fucking horror movie as a black person. <laughs> like, nigga, we can die anywhere. Like, you realize, have you ever seen a video? Like, niggas, we killed every fucking where, doing everything. It's like, oh my God, the police show up. It's like a fucking Pac-Man ghost. Like, oh my God, don't, don't touch me, please, fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was so high once. I'm like, man, we should bring back white-only signs, you know? Like, but not for segregation, but for safety. Like, if I know where I shouldn't go, I'm fine with that shit, you know? <laughs> Like, if you, like cities, not like water fountains and corny shit like that. No, but fucking city. Like, if you have a white only sign outside Avon Lake, I fucking get it, nigga. Cool. <laughs> like, you can have it. Fuck it. Like, all right. Or if it's a Walmart, white only. It's like, yeah, okay, y'all fine. I'll take the Target. It's fine, yes. <laughs> Same with Starbucks. Like, all right, fucking have it, nigga. I'll take Dunkin' Donuts, nigga. Not that serious. Just stop calling the fucking. It's stressful. Now I got a fucking baby. That's even worse. <laughs> Why are we still making people? Like, <laughs> have you seen these motherfuckers out here? We're trash. Like, we're not getting better. <laughs> like, we've panned out. We've done the best we're gonna be. We, we, did, we did it. Like, after LeBron's ring here, we said fuck everything. Like, once LeBron got a ring, it was over for the world. We ain't did shit right since. I'm not your guy. Don't cheer for me. Like, once we made Donald Trump president as a fucking joke, we ain't care about this country no more. Like, it's over with. Like, we don't need to do this shit anymore. We can stop now. Let's... We can't fix this shit. Like, I'm black. You know how fucking weird it was to, like, hear people argue about dumb laws? Like, I was three-fifths of a person before. Like, if you let the right history book go, I wasn't real yet. I'm property according to some laws. Like, stop making dumb rules. We fight about bathrooms. Get rid of urinals. How about that? Now y'all gotta sit on the stand. It don't fucking matter no more. I'm tired of this dumb shit. I'm not your guy. I just, I'm tired of arguments. That's all it is. It's King Solomon. Cut the fucking baby. It's not. I love people. I'm tired of arguing. I gotta be a dad. You know how fucking hard it is to be nice like, to a girl and lie to her forever now? Like the world ain't shit. I love doing dumb shit for your mom. Hell yeah, I love to hear your mom stories after work and then hear you talk about nothing after school. This is fun. <laughs> and I can't fucking leave, because I'm black. If I was fucking white, oh my God, I'd be out of here so fast. <laughs> it's like, there's two things I think I just don't like doing, but I have to because I'm black. Tipping and fatherhood, you know? <laughs> And we, I'm telling you right now, because if, like, if I leave, it's like, you know, black don't take care of their kids. No, just me, fuck that. You don't understand, I need to sleep, man. I haven't slept in so fucking long, whatever. 
We love fatherhood. We made Cosby. I mean, he's a fucking psycho, but he knew how much fatherhood was fun. Like, he did the shit, like, for years. Every black comedian's been a dad on TV. We all love the shit. But doing it, oh, fuck that, it's stupid. I'd rather play a dad on TV at this point in my life. Mm. It got so bad that I looked up child support for myself. Because I didn't understand, I didn't know what child support was. Like, my dad was there, I never really heard about child support. And I'm like, you mean to tell me I can pay once a fucking month and not be here? Nigga, sign me up. Like, <laughs> give me at least three months. I'll be back, just give me three months of my own. Let me get some fucking sleep and I'll come back happy rejuvenated. Like, I'll be... <laughs> and my baby's teething, that's just not fun. Like, she put everything in her mouth. I'm like, oh, this is weird. But I'm like, she's like her mom, she's gonna stop soon. <laughs> Your mom don't suck dick, in case you ain't get that job. <laughs> and I understand why. I mean, she, she got a doctorate. Like, how you gonna suck a nigga who dropped out dick, for real? Like, <laughs> you don't have a dissertation come out your mouth put drop out dick in your mouth. I, I understand why she ain't really, her heart ain't into it. <laughs> I just gotta come hard and heavy already. That should be kind of stressful. It's like, I come in the room ready already? Okay, I feel like a slut. Oh, am, but damn. <laughs> I gotta raise a daughter, like that shit's fun, like. I thought they got kidnapped once and I celebrated, you know? And I came home and it was quiet and it was a folded piece of paper on the ground. And I'm like, either it's a Dear John letter or a ransom note. Either way, I'm cool tonight. Like, I'm going to sleep, like I'll do that shit tomorrow. <laughs> like, I don't care if the ransom was $20, I'm not gonna pay that shit till Tuesday, fuck off. Like, I'm not doing it. We fucked up with women pretty bad as a group, as a group of men. We really fucked them over with little shit. Like, you ever realize there's not a term for women to hang out with, like a group of women that doesn't sound like bad? Like, girl sounds young as fuck, ladies sound like they got shoulder pads. It's just like, <laughs> women's formal as hell. Like saying men, nobody says, you see those men over there, those are suspects. Like, nobody describes them <laughs> like that. Like, we got guys. Guys is a very common term. Like, hey guys, everybody's cool with it. There's no term for, for women for that way. It's like, damn, they can't, like, a, a bunch of bitches ain't gonna work for so long. <laughs> can't call them dames, broads. I mean, we've been fucking them over with words for a long time. Like, damn, we ain't called girls nothing nice. That's crazy. <laughs> it's weird. I gotta act like my daughter ain't gonna be out here in these streets. She gonna date at least two dudes. And I gotta try and act like I don't gotta tell her about weird dicks and shit. Like, <laughs> I got female friends who told me, yo, weird dicks are out here. Like, you, they have like a court face when they get a, a new dick, because the dick might not fit the body or the personality. It might be like, uh, oh, that's the dick you brought. Damn. <laughs> they can't say that. They got to be like, okay. <laughs> like, if, you don't, if you're not circumcised, you should tell somebody. Like, I don't know. I am, so I don't have to say shit. Let's put my dick out there, like, cool. But like, usually it could be a surprise. Like, oh, okay. Start singing to you, like, oh, wow, all right. <laughs> it's hard to talk about women now and be righteous, because I don't know how. I still objectify them. <laughs> I try to be better at it, though. You know, I try and anything between the shoulders or above the knee, I don't really address on a woman. Like, any of this shit, I don't red zone, I don't see it. But if a girl got some big titties, I just find a little switch, you know. If she got some big titties, oh my God. I love your nails. <laughs> well, she got a fat ass. She's like, oh my God, those shoes are amazing. Thank you so much for wearing them. Every time I see some white shoes, I'm like, look at that. Look at this coming around. Okay, okay. I see y'all out here. Yoga pants. <laughs> I got womanized once. It gave me a little perspective. It was weird. Like, I was in Atlanta. And you hear about the rumor about Atlanta's really gay, and you're like, well, it can't be that true. It's true. Like, I'm like, damn, they, it wasn't even a gay bar, but when they come in there, it is. You just gotta, it's, it's not strange there. It's just like, oh, okay. But he was on my fucking neck. Like, he had the gay gaze, which, like, he had eyeliner on or something, because his eyes was fucking staring at me to the point I felt uncomfortable. I'm like, is my titty out or some shit? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm trying to look away and shit. He keep looking. I'm like, oh, man. Then he got bold. Like, 
hey Slim. I'm like, what the fuck? Is that a pet name? Nigga? I'm like, yeah, what's up? I'm like, you want a drink? I'm like, shit, it's homophobic if I don't. I said, yeah, man, I'll take a beer. Hey, bartender, get eyebrows whatever he want. Nigga, that's two pet names. There ain't gonna be too many more pet names, man. And by the time that bottle hit my hand from the bartender, this big motherfucker floated over here so fast, it was in my personal space. I'm like, damn, you walk soft, that's kinda cool, like, you can ease up, like. I'm like, man, before you even get started, I'm not really, I'm not, thanks for the beer, but I'm not interested. I'm like, how you know? What you mean? How you know you're not gay? I said, oh, I can't fly either, bro. I ain't had to try that shit either. You know, I ain't got to try and fail everything to find out about myself. I can't fly, I ain't gay, I just. But how you know if you never tried it? Dude, I, Look here, man, I still gag when I brush my teeth. How about that? <laughs> right, nigga, I'm not talking about the back of my throat, just the moles on the side. Yop, 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 with a toothbrush this big. Dicks are probably bigger. This is so, you know, fuck up. <laughs> Scared to raise a kid now, man. And I'm like, I wouldn't trade my daughter for a son because it's still going to be black, so that shit going to be fun for me. It's going to be stressful and motherfucker. So I think if I have any more kids, I just want to adopt like two white kids or some shit. <laughs> just to have some stress-free parenting. <laughs> Plus I have a dream. Uh, I want to own white people, the best way to do it is through adoption. <laughs> and before you get all worried and you're nervous about it, I wouldn't get like a whole Epstein Island full of white babies and some creepy shit. Or like have a whole plantation where for white kids. It would just be a simple system. Just two white babies, just one for the house, one for the field. <laughs> Thank you very much, that's my time.